Hello everyone, my name is Paul Goddard and welcome to episode 92 of the Agile Pubcast. 92, can you believe that? Yes, we're still in lockdown. Yes, we're not in the pub when we should be, but uh, we had to have a few drinks in our own uh, homes this weekend. So we hope you like this episode. In this episode, we're talking about stories and storytelling because it's task number two of the Scrum Mastery Challenge Lockdown Edition. Yes, seven of our global contestants had to submit a 60 second video of us of telling a story to me and Jeff. And then we were going to give points for the best stories. So we hope you like the episode. We hope you're doing well back at home. Uh, we hope you're subscribed by now. You really should be. And we hope if you can to give us a nice review on iTunes because apparently that helps. Um, and why don't you tell a friend about the podcast? You know, invite one of the people you work with to have a listen to one of these episodes and you never know, they might get hooked. So on with the show, enough of me rambling. Let's play the jingle. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, fancy seeing you here. I know, another... Uh, lockdown pint on a very murky evening in the uh, in the uk well in, in my part of the uk murky is interesting well it was torrential here we had thunder and lightning and flash floods and everything did you flash floods yeah yeah people's houses were flooded so really much, so much came down in such a short amount of time people's uh garages were flooded and yeah wow well, not not here. we had we had rain we had claps of thunder we had we had love that lovely smell you know when you open the window and it's mm. been a bit been a bit dry and that lovely fresh rain smell mm. do like that getting old mate what are you drinking my friend what's that a cloud it's like a cloudy pint this is a this is a bitter it's from a from a local brewery by me daya brewery who are uh, they're doing very well for themselves apparently this one's called best foot forward it's a bitter um, and it's it's quite so much so I think maybe I shouldn't have it should be perhaps more um, room temperature I, I've, I've had it in the fridge it feels like something you you'd get from a from a pump and it would be you know, mm. nice room temperature English bitter um, yeah it's, didn't it's, suit didn't suit being in the fridge then it's fine it's absolutely fine and, and I I will be one of those heathens who who actually will happily drink. What's yeah. room temperature at at fridge temperature, but yeah, it's uh, so it's not it's not it's not carbonated. It's not like a lager or anything. A little bit of fruit flavour, a little bit of what they call here barley biscuity flavour. Which mm. yeah, I could you could eat that with a bit of cake in the afternoon. You had me at biscuit and you had me at cake. So anything like that, I'd have probably ordered it. There's a, a from, my, from my side of things, mate. There's only um, the mysterious. We think it's number seven. But it could be number six. So it's either lucky number six. Or... It's in the middle of the box, basically. Yeah. So I was hoping this would be my last lockdown tider, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Oh, this is Burrow Hill. Burrow Hill, Somerset Cider. I've, I've been drinking recently um, at, at the weekends, uh, Burrow Hill Perry. So uh, this is a familiar brand to me. Okay. So, yeah, this is local stuff. Oh, this is okay. Shep's and Mallet, I think. Yeah, so six percent standard. Yeah, it's a blend of at least eleven vintage cider apples, Jeff. Vintage medium apple. blend of eleven means any old apples. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else I could drag off, here, mate, I'm afraid. off the orchard floor. Yeah, um, whatever's been left. Yeah, but it's quite. Uh, it's certainly very clear. With a fair bit of fizz to it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's a... Uh... Well, cheers to you, mate, and good health. Cheers, yeah. Happy birthday, Owen, my lad. I've had, so I've eaten too much today. We've got a cake, and we've had a massive... My son wanted a takeaway curry for his birthday tea, so we had a takeaway curry. Mm. Cake, and now a nice um, calorific cider, just to finish it all off, so I'm... Um, to put an extra notch on the belt tonight, I think. Yeah. 
That's all right. It's just tastes of apples to me. That's that's fine by me. Fair enough. All right. There we go. Yes, crack we on, shall we? We need to we need to review some uh, some entries, some competition entries. Scrum Master Challenge, Lockdown Edition, Task Two. Challenge two, yeah. So for for everybody else's benefit, the, the contestants were, were challenged to write a story this week. And they were given one picture as inspiration. It was a photograph. Uh, when I looked at it, I thought maybe French cobbled street, mm. uh, sort of black and white photo, oldish bike with a with a basket. Uh, and that was it. They, they, that, they were to use that picture as inspiration to tell a story. In 60 seconds. 60 yes. seconds or less, yeah. yeah. And uh, yes. two of them were caught out by breaking the time box last week. And the metaphorical wrist slap, I think, worked. No one broke the time yes. box last week, did they? So, so just to cover that um, across all um, submissions this week, there were no um, time issues that I need to report. Excellent, excellent. Any other um, judicial verdicts needed? No, I think every, everyone was in within the uh, constraints. Certainly, they're all um, videos, all submitted on time, I believe, and certainly time constraints were, were followed. So that was great. No, okay. nothing to, um, no penalty points for that element as such at the moment, Jeff. All right. Okay. Where should we start then? Um, first on my list is uh, Jags. Jags. Representing Team UK. Uh, so we will play a little bit of a clip here. When I was 10, I had my first job, a paper boy. Me and my bike, look at Budgie and Woods. We had to deliver about 40 kilograms of newspapers every day. So there, yeah, there you go. So talking about his, his old, his first job and his, his little bike with a name, Budgie. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I did ever name my bike, no. But for me, that made it a little bit more personal. Yeah. So it was, um, it it made it. Um, I've got some of my notes down here. It seems very genuine, and it kind of it's. It didn't seem um, in any way fictitious. It didn't seem in any way um, unauthentic, inauthentic. That's the word. Yeah, I think he saw that. He saw that picture and that memory came flooding back. Um, mm. It was it was clear he was remembering. You could see he was he was looking off to the side, looking wistful. You, you, you almost imagine him going out and, and delivering a few papers that mm. afternoon. He was quite specific as well, wasn't he? In in so he was he was ne he, the weight of the papers, the time of day of his paper round, very specific details that he brought into his story. Mm. And that helps. So that helps the listener to um, put themselves in that, you know, to build empathy, to be specific, something that certainly from my improv um, uh, workshops and things like that, I've been told by improv teachers is to be specific. One of Mike Myers big, um, big uh, learning points is he talks about specifics. The more specific you can make something, the more people will be there with you. Yeah. So that was good. Oh, I've got here one thing on a, a slight um, this is well, a slight um, negative here is a lack of, a bit of a lack of emotion. I felt there could have been a bit more of a an explanation about how he was feeling and about how um, that paper round made him the emotions that he felt at the time or the emotions he's feeling now. So it's quite factual as opposed to quite more emotional. Okay, because I got I, I, I seem to remember him saying he loved it. Um mentioned all the seasons really enjoyed it so i think i got the feeling of emotion so the fact that you didn't meant it maybe connected more did you have a paper round yeah you did maybe it's because i hated my paper round ah yeah so um i've got a lot of bad memories of my paper round that's interesting isn't it hmm. so I've, I've got a bias there yeah maybe was it a story that that that's the that's the question I have for you as a referee? Was was it technically a story? It was it was just sort of a memory. Well, this is something we need to discuss. Um, whether there's a few examples of this across, whilst I don't break any rules as such, 
do they follow the intention and follow the um is there a definition of what a story is or what, what's needed to make something a story mr referee <laughs> well a story from my perspective is something that has a character or a, a protagonist to some kind of feature yeah. um uh, has a dr dramatic arc jeff some kind of um establishment of current beginning mm. maybe some kind of drama to build them towards a climax or a, some kind of middle and then some kind of resolution some kind of new reality that's formed an end that's that's got that's the kind of classic hollywood definition of story so was there uh, a what, dramatic what art in jags's record? not really from my perspective not really um it was it was quite it was a description of a memory it's a tough ask to tell a story in 60 seconds, but to me that was like a flashback in a story. Yeah. And I like the, it definitely pinged off some emotions, positive for me, not so positive for you, but that's no. that's art. Um, and and that, you, can't, you can't help that. But just to, be, just to play devil's advocate here, um, I would also classify stories we are we are we tell stories of uh, about ourselves and about of our past mm. so i'm telling a story of, um, um, for nostalgia purposes but i but this is the thing i would probably tell different stories to my friends than i would do to uh, an audience okay. maybe so if i was trying to sell a screenplay or trying to um, write the next novel mm. i might tell different stories so when is it is it is a novel um, an autobiography, absolutely not. So it's a different thing. They're different um, audiences, yeah. and maybe they're hitting on different. Um, they're different structures. I think. Okay. They're not. They're not necessarily. Well, they are monologues. Mm, but be careful. But there's a memory can be. I, I think you can see, still tell memories in, in a story selling fashion. You can still create drama in, in a in a memory. And and my some of my best friends from school. I won't name them. Um, but they know who they are. One of them is a superb storyteller, and he can give a tell a memory in a very memorable way. And another one of them is a terrible storyteller, and he tells um, the same story in a very deadpan kind of uninteresting way. So it's um, storytelling is something that we'll get onto that a bit later. But yeah, okay. some of some of these um, come through better as storytellers, I think, yeah. than the stories themselves. So there was a lot I liked about Jack's Jags's effort. Um, in my head, I'm not sure it, it was really a story. I think he could have made made more of a story, picked a particular day on his paper round, for example, or yeah, some, some something that happened that was different or that was out of the ordinary for someone on a paper round. Yeah, yeah. Um, he tried to link it to the agile concept of autonomy. I, I thought there was an, an effort to make the link there. Um, I, yeah. I, I can I can see that. I, I think autonomy is a little bit challenged to the paper round. You have a certain number of houses to do. You have a certain number. Of paper. It's, it's, there aren't many variables to play with. Um, but he, he he enjoyed being out on his own and working out what which order to do them in and things like that. Okay, where should we go next? Uh, next on my list is Vikash. Vikash. Okay, so we'll, we'll play a little clip of Vikash. Hello, here's my story. The bicycle reminds me of the days before lockdown when I used to commute to office on this bicycle. While riding my bicycle, I think of the ways to approach the resolution of the problems that the team is facing back in the office. I, 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 I enjoyed it. I enjoyed okay. it. I, he, he put it together well. I loved the sound effects. I felt... So he was, I think he was the only um, submission that used music. Am I right? Uh, yeah, this time. Yeah, for this using so that's an interesting thing. Music, creating mood and creating drama through um, music through yeah. a soundtrack. Yeah, only one. So I think there's a little bit of kudos there for, particularly in storytelling terms, you can create atmosphere, atmosphere through sound. Yeah, he kept me. He, he kept me intrigued. I was trying to work out whether the sound effects were in the background or actually part of the story. Yeah, that was a little bit confusing. Yeah, and then, and then there was a twist at the end. Yes, for me, I, I and so was it real? And mm. I was, I was thinking, I, I want to know what's next. I, I, mm -hmm. I've got questions to be answered. 
a little bit enigmatic. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, and again, so I think that's that's an interesting subjective view. So for me personally, I don't like being left for questions. So I, I got that sense that left me a little bit, um, a little bit too much stress. Stress hormone was, yeah. was stimulated there. Okay, like the class at the end of EastEnders. I need to, okay, what? <laughs> Which won't work given our global audience, but there you go. <laughs> So I don't, I'm not a massive fan of cliffhangers. I'm not a massive fan of unexplained endings. And I like, the, again, a good um, description of a story for me is closure. It's something that does have a sense of resolution. Mm. So I was left a little bit um, confused, I think, by the end of the video. Yeah. As to, Where is to that? What happened. I like that. Yeah. I liked, okay. I liked that he, he, he used his body in the storytelling. I, he was very, very much so. And he used props. Use props using a phone, using things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he managed to weave in a link to Agile as well in terms of pushing teams to deliver more and why do they want to do that and what's really going on. And, but uh, again, on the similar, similar thing to Jack's, was it a story or was it a, mem- was it a, a day in his life? Was it a, um, I could, whether it was fictitious or not, I don't know, but was it actually something that's happened? Was it just a, a, something that's happened to him or was it completely? Uh, imagined from his own mind. I don't know. I think it was meta. I think he started off telling a story about something that had happened, and then the story became now. I thought I thought it was really clever. <sighs> okay, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but but I liked it. Which cool. next? Next on my list is F- Team US- Team USA. Sorry, Faye, Faye and Rob. Okay, Faye and Rob. So we'll play this one. Um, well, I'm gonna look at this. Photo, I see an older bicycle that looks kind of like a hodgepodge of older parts put together um, at different times. So I think about the team that I'm supporting right now, and they're really at an inflection point where they are looking at what served them in the past, the vehicle that got them to where they are, and then what they need to go forward. So what kind of vehicle do they need to go forward and be successful in the future? Uh, so, so they're a compl- very different approach. Yeah. Is that a story? No, <laughs> I did. I don't. I, did, I, I don't. I. I was left wanting them to. Oh, think. Oh, I wish you'd done this. I wish you'd. Oh, I wish you'd done that. Um, it felt a little bit like an interview. Like I know because they were working as a pair, which is a slightly different. Um, but they could have done so much more with a pair. They could have had a. Um, they could have had dialogue and they could have had the do- the dialogue could have been the story. They could have been the, the actors in that story themselves rather than it felt like an interview of someone who was, who had a story to tell. Did you have, did you have in your mind before you watched the clip, what you were expecting? Were you expecting them to act out a scene? No, no, not necessarily. Okay. But I was, I was hoping that they would, um, not necessarily act, but certainly um, script, use use dialogue okay. to, to become two characters and, and have that ability to play off each other. Maybe not in physical terms, but certainly in terms of... Yeah. Um, I, I, I get the impression that, that you, you had a preconception about what a pair should do in this task. Yeah, maybe. Again, that's my bias, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I thought it was a, 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 a clever approach. So, you know, effectively one person acting as the other person's coach. And, you know, I've, I've used random images in, in team retrospectives before or, or in one-to-one coaching sessions just as an abstract tool to let people play and, and go where their mind's going without, um, you know, without boundaries, really. So I could see a clear link to work there. Um, and I, although they didn't bring this out here, I think it's something that we sort of mentioned is that people, when they look at the, the same image, will see a different thing because of the lens that they have and, and whatever yeah. else it rings for them. Yeah. Um, and the other thing that stood out for me was the, the metaphor side of things. So, so Faye made this clear view of, you know, what kind of vehicle did the, did the team need going forward? And I, oh. I'm a big fan of metaphor. I know you are. I think my only thing was, was it a story? No. Yeah. It was, and I've written down here, it was a metaphor, not a story. So it was, 
a coaching tool. They used it as a, as a coaching tool yeah. as a technique, and absolutely right, like, as you just said. But for me, it didn't necessarily use that sixty seconds to tell to capture the imagination, my imagination through story. The other thing I've written down here, again, I'm, I'm probably being too critical today. My our contestants are going to. It's you've got the grumpy Paul persona on today. <laughs> as long as you, yeah. as, as long as you're going to apply it consistently. As long as it's consistent, right? So I can just say all the bad grumpy things. Grumpy Paul, it's fine. But but I'm sorry, but but 15 seconds. I counted at the beginning. 50, the first 15 seconds of a 60 second story has got to has got to capture people. It's got to it's got to get people's attention. It's got to make an impact. Okay. And I think it took them 15 seconds to actually start their conversation. Right. And I can't, I can't remember the exact wordings of what was used and we'll play it back, but it just, I've written down here that they could have made so much more of an impact as a pair in the first 15 seconds. It's the same if you're a product owner in a sprint planning session, if you if equate that to two hours yeah. in that first 50, in that first 15 minutes, you've got to capture the imagination of your development team in, the, in that first 15 minutes, That's get them point. in the room. Get them in, get them in the room, and I felt that was an opportunity missed. That's a fair point. Yeah, the hook people in quickly, get their get their attention, get their curiosity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. But, okay. Good. Next. Who's next? Next on my list is Anshul. Anshul. Okay. So here is Anshul's story. In Singapore, there was once a little boy who got badly hurt in an embarrassing incident while learning how to ride a bike. He was so angry that he declared to his friends that he's never going to ride a bike again. I like that. Yeah, I, it was good. I think Anshul could, could read me a story before I go to bed. <laughs> yeah. So I've written down here, um, I counted them up because it made an impact. I counted them up. I counted emotions. Okay. Um, embarrassed, angry, proud, terrible. So... Uh, Terrible, probably not really an emotion, but certainly those are words which I connected with and I um, that helped build build the story, build the empathy for mm. me. There was a twist. Yeah. So again, similar. So I'm and, again. Like Shalom, whatever his name is. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I didn't see. I'm terrible at this. Notoriously bad for not spotting twists in stories. Yeah. Right. So. Um, Shawshank Redemption. Never seen it. Uh, but, but... <laughs> oh, oh dear. Just put it for me. Um, <laughs> but but generally, I my friends were that I go to the cinema. I'll make them. I say they'll crack up at the end because I say I didn't see that coming, and everyone they go, "You must have seen that coming." The most obvious twist ever. Didn't. But no, just I generally let that twist hit me, and that was a good example of that. Didn't see it. The twist. I don't, I don't want to spoil it because we're going to put these on YouTube, right? So, so we'll, well, yeah, we'll put right. it on YouTube. But there's no guarantee that the twist you think happened is a twist. What do you mean? Explicit? No. He hasn't explicitly spelled out what you're thinking he's implying. But that's what I think makes it good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a good twist, and we'll come to this later again. I don't. I think a good twist doesn't have to be explained. Doesn't have to be. Ran, yeah, ran down your throat. I think yeah. it should be something that, that people can go, ah, yeah, ah, yeah like that. Yeah. So that's that kind of, again, that's a harder part of the dramatic arc to to bring out because it effectively changes the the, the the audience. Uh, yeah, so the audience, you can you can you can with a with a, a twist that doesn't make sense, you can lose an audience, yeah. but a twist that leaves more questions, yeah. Um, generally uh, invokes engagement so that was good clear, clear um, and again arc. sorry clear dramatic arc yeah yeah there was a start so there was a resolution there was a res yeah exactly the only thing again i'm being mr negative here being a referee i know but uh, if i'm trying to create a balanced argument something to improve on is that he could have made himself and what by i mean himself i mean his body and his voice his range his his tone, his volume, he could have told the story, I think. He could have ramped up to an even bigger level hmm. and create he could have created my by with movement and something that Vikash did and create movement, hand gestures, eye and eye contact, facial uh, recognition, all these types of stuff that we um were honed into, especially through video. They could have made more of that, I think. But that's a minor yeah, a minor point. Yeah. 
I, I liked the from a, from an agile perspective, from a work perspective, big link to resilience, um, trial, error, yeah. um, inspecting, adapting, yeah, experience. I, I like that. Yeah, very calm. Good storytelling. Yeah, it's, it's good. Okay, who's next? Stefan. Okay, on Stefan. My list. In Germany, I should tell you a story about an inspiring image. But when I saw the picture of a bicycle, my first reaction was more like, Ugh. so no story about bikes from my side today. So there you go. Okay. Referee? Okay, um, so not really a story. Nope. If, and But I think Stefan was almost quite explicit about that, that he wasn't particularly inspired by the image and didn't really see... Want to want to tell to want to go down the storytelling route. What was interesting for me was that he obviously the bike is the biggest object and it's 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 central in the image, so your eye is drawn to it. But it's not the only thing; it's not the only part of the image. And we no. didn't say tell us a story about a bike. There was no. there was no need for him to include the bike at all. Um, or he could have told us a story about why he doesn't like bikes. Mm. But he decided not to tell us a story. I, okay. I it was it was educational. Yeah, I've got here educational, but not in a not really emotional. So there was again, it was quite informative for me, and it, it, I certainly learned a, a fair bit for, uh, from it in terms of how the brain works. And that in itself was quite interesting. But well, ironic in a way. Yeah, in that he was talking about the different parts of the logical and the emotional parts of the brain, and mm. focused on the logic. While mm. saying the emotional side is the one that, that processes quicker. I think he said at the beginning, the, the bike and the picture makes me feel, hmm, and he did something, he, he came up with a great facial kind of uh, reaction, which mm. I think, again, so that that in itself was quite interesting. It would could have been explained through words even more, yeah. why it made, why, why it didn't connect with him. Yeah. But I, um, I, as, yeah, as a referee there, kind of almost a little a bit of disdain for the actual challenge itself. Which you know, are you disqualifying him? You're not disqualifying him, are you? I'm not going to disqualify him, but I, I kind of, if I referee kind of raising an eyebrow. Okay. Mm, okay. All right. Maybe for that one. Uh, two left? Two left. Next one on my list is Mike. Mike. Okay. Here's Mike's story. Every time I see a picture of a bike, it reminds me of when I was a kid. I didn't have a lot of money. My mum saved up for three years to buy me a bike. It was a grifter. I loved it. It was a great bike. Another memory. Yeah, it was. It, it was interesting. I, I liked. I, li I could relate to it. Yeah. Um, would everyone be able to relate to it? Maybe not. That's the risk. I don't think. I don't think anyone could relate to it as much as me because I had a grifter as well. <laughs> I had exactly the same bike as my. Favorite. But yeah, yeah, and you can. Yeah, so there's probably a strong connection there in terms of maybe that's a good thing because he knew that you were the audience. Maybe he was. Um, Making I a, you know, could have known I had a grifter. Well, you never know. But um, certainly um, playing on emotions, so creating that character, that character had a backstory for the yeah. character was himself, um, not having any money. And I think that was mentioned a couple of times, so kind of um, increasing the empathy there and that, um, and almost to the point of maybe a bit of sympathy for him, for him as a child. So that creates a, a bit of more connection, a bit more engagement. Based on real life, based on real memories, the bike itself. So again, we could start to, if you weren't, even if you didn't know what a grift the bike was, he did a quite a good description about how it was unconventional for a bike yeah. in, 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 um, in modern day terms. And certainly you could relate to that. Yeah. I like but the, yeah, 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 go on. I, I like the creativity and the innovation. So that's, that's, as well as the fact that he had a grifter, that's my um, sort of takeaway memory of not so much the bike, but the fact that he made lights out of candles and jam jars. Mm. That innovation, that um, art of the possible. Uh, and yeah, that that not not feeling sorry for yourself or, or giving up or whatever. He just got on with it and, 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 and made the best of it and had, had a great time and it's got good memories for him. I like and that's that. something which, which sometimes can make a story more um intriguing is something unusual hmm. i'd so never really considered the idea that you could make 
bike lights. It, just doesn't, it doesn't doesn't seem feasible, does it, in terms of wind and and kind of yeah, kind of. But I suppose if you put the jam jars kind of that way, and give it a try. Yeah, it's like scientifically, it's a, is that even possible? But it must be because he's done it. You unless he's make, making it up. You got to trust the man with that moustache. Yeah. All right, but again, finally, so well within the planets, yeah. Finally, Greg. Greg. Once upon a time, there was a person called Rene, who lived down Scrum Mastery Lane. Rene inherited a bike which he didn't really like. Okay, so I'm not sure if it was intentional, but um, there was some rhyme in there. Yeah, I, I <laughs> saw. Yes, I noticed. That. <laughs> But I don't know, so only Greg would be able to answer this, is was it written, was it was it the intention that it would rhyme? Because I think I only spotted one rhyme. I thought there were two. Was there two rhymes? I thought there were two. But it was both at the start, and I, I, I'm, 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 I probably need to check it now. But then I thought, oh, then it, then he left it. I, yeah. If he'd have carried on rhyming, I think. Yeah, it would. Especially yeah. as he had the cat in the hat hat on. Yeah, and I thought, this is going down a, yeah, a Dr. Zeus, Zeus route, and I thought... Yes, he's got this. And then I kind of got lost in expecting the, the rhyme to to appear, but I couldn't spot another one. So, again, so described there was a... It was a story. There was a story. There was a journey. There was a, a character. There was a beginning, middle, end. There was a there was a narrative. But a bit of the backstory as well, family history. Yes. Um, so we said, he said, just, he said a person called Rene, which... Again, could have he could have embellished that a bit more yeah. instead of saying a bit more about Renee, about the type of person she was. So, um, but yeah, could have told us a bit more about her in that case. And then there's the, can we come to this idea of the moral? So, for the benefit of people who haven't heard the whole um, tape, Greg pretty much spells out the moral of the story at the end, mm -hmm. I think. And my question here is, should a moral have to be explained at the end of a story? I think it's good having a moral to the story. Yeah, I think I think it's uh, it creates more impact if people can see a deeper meaning behind the story. Mm. But you think but it would be self evident? I think, and I think there's an element there of it becomes something to engage much more connect with me personally if I have to think to myself, what is that? What what is that telling about? What is that story telling something about me or? About my 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 reality and my my personality or my it connection. narrows down the interpretation, which could be a good thing if you want everybody to have the same message, but it becomes less personal then because I'm not really mapping it onto through my level. Mm. Mm. But I think it, I think it makes more of an impact for me personally if I've come to that myself yeah. and I, I, I've I've realised that moral for myself and I've seen if, it myself. What if you don't see it coming? Because you don't see things coming in stories. No. What if you miss it? I don't see twists. I think I see morals. Okay. I think I think I think that's a bit more obvious to me. Okay. Um, I I I can't. So I can't actually remember what the moral was. But I'm left with the feeling that it was positive. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was surprised. I didn't. The twist was a surprise. I wasn't expecting them to be a YouTuber. No. Uh, I thought, yeah, the, it was a story. I thought the story aspect could have been a bit tighter and a bit more fluent. And if he'd have carried on with the rhyme, he'd have run away with it, I think. Yeah, I think I think the rhyme would have won it. But uh, just knowing how you how you work as a as a as a as a judge here, Jeff, I think you would have been sold on rhyme. Yeah. The other thing I've mentioned here as well um is eye contact. Okay. So I don't know if you picked up. I don't know if you picked up on it as well, but just as a storyteller, mm. and I know it's very artificial doing it onto a phone or onto a device, but however you are recording this, but it's harder to engage an audience if you can't see them, especially if you're just looking at a lens. But if you think about um, even like Jack and Ori, which is a, a, a story that a, a program that you must have seen in your youth, Jeff. Yeah, no idea. If you've got no idea what I'm talking about, no, I do. Jack and Ori Jack and Ori, kids TV, they're telling a story, but they're telling, telling it to the to a camera. So you still can engage through eye contact with, with the lens on your screen. If, yeah. if you've just got to hold it for 60 seconds, you can still do that. So for me, there's a little bit of disconnect 
with the story and with the telling because because of the lack of eye contact. And I think that's something that anyone, regardless of whether you're a product owner or a scrum master, whatever it is, eye contact can can be the can be the difference between you being authentic as a storyteller and, and not being. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so, should we talk a little bit more about stories, or should we do the scoring first? Well, let's let's do just a little bit of a general debrief on what we how we see value in stories and okay. storytelling. Well, there's the there's the obvious in terms of product backlog items and trying to create, you know, that's where the idea of user stories came from to create some empathy. We, we're big fans of, of sprints being, you know, a chapter in, in the product development, uh, being tied together with, with a kind of sprint goal, which can be a nice story. Um, I think everybody's got their own stories to tell within a team and being prepared to share that story as you've said a few times, just just brings that sense of connection, trust, commonality, normalization. Mm. Um, and then for me, the other the other aspect of this is that if we're part of a team, then we're all characters in a story. We're all playing a part. Yeah. I'm not just talking about playing a particular role here, but we are all playing a part in, in creating something together. We're evolving something together. Yeah, absolutely. Um, product owners for me, this is the biggest and the strongest connection I see with storytelling um, in agile terms is through product management, product leadership, product ownership. And I make much more of a emphasis when I'm teaching and coaching product owners that this is something they need to be comfortable with, um, even if they don't. So if a team can tell they don't believe the story they're telling, yeah, the team won't, team won't follow them on that journey. So it can, it can be a really crap story, but you can still tell it in, a, in, a, in an engaging way. You can still create engagement, intrigue, and connection by how you tell a crap story. Yeah. Um, obviously, what's even better is if the story is compelling. So great storytellers who are telling great stories, that's your perfect kind of um, cocktail there because you're engaging much more parts of your brain as, as listeners. But yeah, uh, yeah, you're right. On a meta level, we're all engaged. We're all involved in a personal story, with our, our, our personal narrative. So being able to, tran- um, to transfer that and to bring people into that, that reality mm. is an important part of, of, of us as humans so it's a skill we'll go all the way back to you know kate when we were writing stories in caves it's it's the same type of thing telling stories around a fire we are effectively sharing um our stories and and telling stories to to keep people engaged with us as human beings at a less grand level i suppose yeah but a more de- day-to-day level i mean i do <clears throat> most of my work these days um sort of organizational leadership and change and culture and for me culture is is basically the stories that we tell about our organization you know us on a good day the the jokes that we tell about ourselves the the failure stories that we tell about ourselves and when we when we go up go home after a bad day and meet our friends in the pub and bitch about our organization those stories that we tell that's part of our culture as well and we're creating new ones and we're reinforcing old ones all the time. And it's how messages get spread and it's how messages endure. That's why you know, a lot of the stories we tell our kids have been told for hundreds, if not longer of years. And that's, yeah, it's, they have a longer life lifespan. You think about the same, I've got friends that I went to school with, what is it now? 20, more than 20 years ago. We tell the same old shitty stories to each other every time we go to the pub and they don't get old. That's the thing. And that's the thing that's interesting is the stories and organizationally, they stay the same and that's what ke- keeps people together. That's what keeps a group of friends together. It's not necessarily what's coming up, but it's about what's come, what's happened in the past, what's connected you in the past and what's kept you together in the past. And some of that and being, great. Some of, it, some of it's great and some of it needs to stay. 
you know, but a lot, a lot for me, a lot of my work is helping leaders of organizations work out which stories need to be replaced and what what new stories we need to start creating. And I'm not talking about manufacturing them, not make, not making them up, but actually creating the conditions for, for new stories with new morals around new behaviors uh, yeah. that we need to start telling and reinforcing and recognizing, rewarding, so that our culture can shift to become a little bit more conducive to the kind of organization we need to be to survive in, in the, in the environment and the market that we're, we're now facing. Um, and while it seems a very childish activity, you know, from one of the first things you were told to do at school was write me a story. Mm. It seems a very childish thing, but it's actually an incredibly important part of adult life, of, of business life, of politics, of, of everything. Uh, because it's so core to us as human beings, as you said. Yeah, as a nice, um, I just, and again, lockdown story in itself. My son Owen is just, um, he's just had a story writing task as part of his home learning sent by his, his um, um, school teacher. And it was to write um, a story in 15 words. Okay. And he loved that, yeah. mainly because it was short, because he knew he wouldn't have to write many words down. Yeah. But when um, what we found was that we said, okay, so now you've done that, Owen. You, you've written a, and it was a, it was a story about a pigeon. I think it was a pigeon or is a bird. Hmm. Probably pigeons based on the based on the pigeons fact that about pigeon. Yeah. Um, but this bird um, woke up. I think it, the basic the, the basic fifteen words was, bird wakes up. Um, steal some bread from Sainsbury's gets chased by the police and goes home. That's it. That's the basics of his, of his story, right? That's the 15 words. Yeah. And he, but once he'd had that, once he was, um, his imagination was captured by that. We said, well, I mean, I wonder if you can now write that story, the same story, but write it in 50 words. Okay. Do you know how many words he ended up writing? I'm going to guess more than 50. Yeah. About 200 words. Wow. Because he was, and Owen hates writing. He hates he hates English. He hates storytelling, but he was cap captured by those um, that narrative of fifteen words, and he found it easier then to write more. Yeah, and it's exactly the same with product owners with telling stories. Better stories are usually shorter stories. The famous one, isn't it? I'm ranting a bit, Jeff. So I've had half a bite of cider. That's all right. Um, you heard the Ernest Ernest Hemingway story. Something to do with shoes. Yeah. So he was, again, I don't know if it's, it's um, a mythical story or whether it was actually happened, but the, ch the story goes that he was challenged by his friends whilst in a restaurant to write a story on a napkin yeah. in five words and he had, for $100 or some, some kind of uh, bet. And he wrote, uh, for sale, was it five words or six, probably six words, for, for sale, baby shoes, never worn. Hmm. That's the story in six words. And it's it's kind of gone down history as you know you can but you can make your imagination wonders yeah. within that as to where there's so many untold elements of that story that your mind and that's for me what does capture a great story um, and you think about films that you haven't seen Jeff um, uh, it's like Jaws yeah right great story. But in essence, you could sum it up in six words. Kill a shark, you know, creates havoc on a on a beach. That's what that's what basically is just a big shark mm. killing people. Um, the famous strap line from Alien, isn't it? Is is um, Jaws in space? That's what they basically sold the film Alien as. It's Jaws okay. in space. So it doesn't have to be a complex story. It doesn't have to have multiple plot points. Yeah. But you can make that simple story a heck of a lot more engaging through the telling mm. one of my favorite twitter accounts is a small fiction so basically it's a story in a tweet and i just just thought i'd see if i can find one yeah here's one uh, here's one at random it got lonely haunting an empty house the ghosts did their best to keep each other's spirits up rattling doorknobs opening cabinets they took turns acting surprised <laughs> that's it yeah. 
it's enough. My mind can go off with that. I could create something out of that. But there's, there's again, we could point people to some lovely um, TED talks around this stuff, around storytelling and how you can just using your voice, using effectively tone, volume, pace, mm -hmm. pitch, um, pause, all those things of using a bit of silence that actually creates atmosphere through how you tell something. Mm. You can do it at home, but you these things a lot of things still do apply in the office as well. So it's it's a valuable story. It's a valuable skill, rather. Storytelling <laughs> is a valuable skill, regardless of your role. I think, um, and just practicing it, I think, I think is good. We all enjoy a good story. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, if nothing else, if you don't get any other benefit out of it, you just get to escape a little bit, don't you? But there are so many personal team organizational societal familial benefits to, to gain from stories um yeah I, I i like this challenge good stuff so we should probably wrap it up with some scores jeff we need to uh, update yes. the, the scores for this yes 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 so where should we start um I, I, I am going to be a bit harsh on Stefan because he didn't really didn't really get into the whole storytelling thing. I enjoyed learning something, um, but I'm, I'm I'm going to give him one point. Um, my winner, I'm going to go from from last to first. Winner, okay. Uh, it, for me, is Anshul. Okay. Um, lovely, lovely voice, dramatic arc, great message, great twist. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, so seven points for Anshul. I'm I'm giving Vikas second place. I was, six points. Yeah, six points to Vikas. Uh, okay. Nice. There was a good link, good twist, bit of music in there. Music of different aspects. Um, and then a bit like last time, I'm the other four. I'm I'm kind of grouping together for different reasons, but. And I'm I'm the games master, so no one can no one can. That was a question. You can go with whatever, whatever score you got. Um, um, so I'm going to actually pull Greg slightly out of it, simply because he had more of a story, mm -hmm. a little bit of rhyme, and a hat. Yeah. So I'm going to put Greg in third place. With five. Yeah. And then yeah. I want to split the rest of the points across the other three. Um, okay. So for me, they weren't quite stories. They all had their benefits, but they weren't quite enough stories for me. So that would be two, three, four, nine. So three points each. Okay. So three points for Jag, three points for Faye and Rob, and three points for Mike. Yep. So in seventh place, we have uh, Stefan with four points. Then going up the table, Rob with six, Greg with seven. Uh, sorry, sorry, Rob and Faye with six, Greg with seven, Jags with eight, uh, joint joint third place with Mike with eight points, Vikash in second place with nine points, and Anshul way out of the lead at the moment with 14 points in, oh, the, in, the, in the lead. Two wins out of two. Yes. For the, He's the player to catch at the moment. To be adopted Singaporean. Yes, Team Singapore. Yeah, good show, good show. Um, and just like last time, we, we, we'd like to challenge our listeners to tell us some stories if you if you like we'll um can we put the picture in the podcast normally we do don't we we can certainly if you check twitter and linkedin we will tweet the picture um of the um the inspiration the image that we, that we use for these stories yeah we'll, we'll send it out and then just reply to that tweet or that that linkedin post with some of your your stories yeah all right any other news <laughs> that's the type of thing I say to my parents when I'm trying to finish on the phone with them oh is it yeah anything, anything else we need to talk about because we're about to go anything else anything okay. on the else on the agenda any other items any other business any other business no I think I'm, that's it mate um, I'm out of lockdown ciders now so I need to rethink maybe that's it maybe we just podcast on shutdown that's it, oh, that's it. I think right, right to Boris and tell him I'm out of cider now, so you have to... Start. What happens next? Wait, open the pubs, please. <laughs> it might be, yeah. Next month, maybe. That's what they're saying, isn't it? Next month. Next month. July. Those famous people, them. That's what they're saying. <laughs> All right, mate. Well, yes. hopefully you're in a less less 
negative mood tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all those contestants who've caught me on a on a Tuesday night after a busy day. Yeah, sorry about that. All right. All right, mate. I'll I'll uh, I'll let you go and we will catch up again soon. Thanks for listening, everybody. And uh yeah. See you soon. Take care. See you next week. Bye.